Hey, everybody, it's the Drive School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, joining me today is my very good friend, Michelle Bauman. She is director of Why for Life, uh, and uh, she's also going to be joining us this summer at Who Am I in Arkansas? Uh, we are very excited about seeing you there. Michelle, how are you? I'm good. I'm so excited about this summer, too. I'm excited about today, but also ex- excited about the summer. <laughs> it's it, Every day is a good day, That's um, right. but it's, it's more fun when we get to hang out. So um, I'm right. looking forward to it. Yeah. So it um, it's been a minute. I, I got to go to, to see you at the March for Life in January. Uh, but before that, we were actually working our way through Genesis. And uh, I completely, it's been so long, I actually forgot where we were. So you, you pointed out, uh, this is going to be a fun one for for life issues in the book of Genesis. Uh, what right. are we tackling today? Yeah, so we're taking a look at Genesis chapter four, which is the story of Cain and Abel. And obviously, we've got we've got a glaring uh, life issue, right? So, so we just ended with the fall into sin, and we ended with um, God promising a savior. And so uh, we get to the story of Cain and Abel, and we start we hear about um, Eve giving birth, right? And she gives birth to a son, uh, and her firstborn is Cain. And um, what's so kind of ironic here um, is that you know she she took God's promise seriously that that He would send a Savior, and so when she she gives birth to Cain, she thinks, okay, I've given birth to this promised Savior. And we, because we know the end of the story, we know, oh, Cain is very far from the Savior, right? Um, he is not not one that brings life, uh, uh, but actually the opposite. So. Um, we, I, it's, it's one of those like Sunday school stories that I think, um, sometimes kind of goes awry, right? So we, we think Cain and Abel bring these, um, these gifts to the altar and we get this, this misconception sometimes that one gift is better than the other in some way. Um, and, and, and what, God's word really is showing us is certainly um, those gifts were intended as as gifts to God, but but um, that that God receives those gifts, um, you know, based on 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 the heart, right? The that Abel brings this gift forward um, uh, because uh, in thankfulness, right? Um, but there's some implication that maybe Cain is bringing it forward in obligation, right? Rather than than in thankfulness and and um, in recognition that God gives all these gifts um, so that to bless us, right? And and then that returning thanks um, concept is 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 um, shown right here, right? Is is debated what what's happening? Um, how did do, why does God accept one gift and why doesn't He accept the other? Right. Um, and and we 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 don't know um, specifically why God says. Um, one gift is good and one one gift is not, or it's not necessarily spelled out for us. But we do know that that Cain's was not received, right? We were talking actually just before we started recording and hanging out, and um, we mentioned sort of the burden of being the firstborn, the only child. Uh, that that often is is completely unintentional. But I, I imagine if your mom told you uh, that you are the savior of all of humanity, uh, <laughs> that that might bear a complex that, that yes, may, maybe brings an obligation of I have to be the best, I have to be doing the, the best. Right. And you're right, that that would very much inform the, the, the way that, that we interact with God. And um, irony of ironies that this actually plays itself out the way that it does. Um, because you're, you're right, it doesn't actually spell out in Genesis why one gift and not the other, but you can kind of work backwards and it, it's one of those where I don't know if it was intentional by God or if it, it just sort of was God sort of being the, 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 the constant teacher that he is. But, but Cain's uh, gift out of obligation uh, and versus Abel's gift out of, out of thanksgiving. Well, Abel's gift uh, bled. Abel's gift was a bleeding sacrifice, which which very much is is the difference between a a, a religion where you have to save yourself by obligation of, of obedience to the law versus one where there's a sacrifice for you and, and you receive it in Thanksgiving. Right, right. And and you know, we we see even that God does address things with Cain, right? He even says, mm-hmm. um, you know, sin is crouching at the door and and beat back the, this desire and again we don't know exactly what this desire is except that there is some sort of component of jealousy um that the, there's this hatred toward his brother and we know that that um cain follows through on this this desire that is contrary to god and um and murders abel 
Um, he, we don't know how it goes down. The, the Bible doesn't record, you know, uh, did he, did he sneak him out into the, into the field? Did he, you know, we don't know how it happened, but we know that it does happen. Um, and so this is the first point, um, since the garden of Eden, since they've been cast out of the garden of Eden, where death happens to humanity, right? We already know that, um, that, Adam and Eve and their descendants are clothed in the skins of animals. And we talked mm -hmm. about that in our last, our last episode where, I mean, like they are surrounded by death, right? Um, because some animal had to die in order to create those clothes uh, for them. And yet um, humankind hadn't, hadn't died. And in this instance, it happens. Cain takes life. When we talked about the commandments uh, a while ago, it feels like a long time ago, but I think it was just, you know, last year we were talking about the commandments and every commandment that God gives, he gives to protect a gift he intends to give. Um, and here we see, you know, the gift of life that he intends to give. And yet we also see that when we break these commandments, it affects other gifts that God intends to give. So it doesn't just affect Abel's life, but it also affects Cain's, right? Not only in his vocations that he's been given. So now he's he's actually ended a vocation that God had gifted him as, as a brother. Now he has other brothers, other sisters, other siblings, but this, this vocation um, with Abel is gone, right? And he's built this wall now between himself and his parents, Right, uh, his parents who love Abel, and and um, you know we can we can imagine that they aren't pleased either, that they are hurt and that they are torn up. Um, but but God, even in the consequence, um, in the ba banishment, He tells Cain that things will not grow for him anymore. Right? Um, not only was he cast out of the of of not only was the family cast out of Eden, but now. Even even the ground, which of course bears the the marks of sin, right? So weeds and and things that will make the harvest difficult. Now God says you you can't even work the fields anymore, right? Right. And so so even the gift of work, even the vocation that Cain has as farmer and provider, um, is going to be affected by by this sin, by this this death that that he created. Um, and, and it just, it shows the ripple effect, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't just um, affect his life, but it affects the lives of future generations, the life, the lives of people he wants to uphold when he marries and has children of his own. Um, he can't grow things, right? Um, and that's, that's, that's very deep seated, not to like play on words, but, um, <laughs> but will will actually affect him and his family for generations to come. But what's wonderful, though, is that it, it's actually even this is his gift. Um, I, I think it's easy to sort of, especially in the Old Testament, to see sort of that one to one consequence of sin punishment um, to see a God who is either really angry, can't wait for you to catch up or a God who simply works karma. Um, and, and that's not the, the same God of the New Testament. And so either there's something very different or when God works, he disciplines those he loves because it, it's actually better for us. It, you can see an expression of, of God's anger over sin here. Absolutely. But but all the while through, you see mercy. And we'll get to more of it later. But even the idea that that he would sort of rip away from from Cain, uh, the ability to grow from the ground. Well, it was that which he trusted and brought to to God in the first place out of obligation. He even here, God is peeling away all of the ways that, that Cain would justify himself and actually forcing him to depend on something else, um, which is which is a greater gift. It, it's one of those painful things we have too, though, and especially in terms of life um we have we have gone before about sort of the, the ideas of of um young women in, in the midst of, of pregnancy working towards choices of expediency um and and the idea of independence and and what a what a burden independence can be as much as we are still convinced that we want it uh but but that that cain would actually be forced to forced to depend on someone else you actually get to receive more that way and in the same way it's it's scary to have to depend on someone else it's scary to to have a, a life of your own to to not know what you're going to do but it's also really really wonderful to to see god at work to to 
care for us in ways that we would have never expected and absolutely never chose, but, but still find good there. Right. And you're absolutely right. He does. God does peel that away. Right. And, and we do see that he is depending on himself. Cain is depending on himself. Even when God reaches out to him and says, you know, what, where's your brother? He's giving Cain an opportunity right there to confess and to turn Mm -hmm. away from his sin, turn toward God. Um, And yet uh, Cain responds with, you know, who am I? Like, am I my brother's keeper? Right. Um, He he responds in sort of a a flippant manner. Um, But then but then God shows him the seriousness of this. You know, he says that that Abel's blood, and and if you look at the Hebrew, it's his bloods, right? So blood from generations is calling mm-hmm. out to to God, um, you know, and and we have this whole image of like the earth being a mouth, right? Um, swallowing up uh, Abel and and the rest of his generations, and and God is saying this is this is serious stuff, man. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna intervene, and I'm I'm going to to help you turn. Right. Um, I gave you yeah. that opportunity. You didn't take going it to turn you. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to turn you. That's right. Uh, back toward me. And um, and we know that Cain, he hasn't really gotten it even by the end um, of that, because, you know, his complaint is this is too harsh. This is too much mm-hmm. for me to bear. Um, uh, and and, um, you know, we hope that he does does get it later. But but God says, you know, even in this, I will protect protect you by placing that mark on you. And of course, we don't know what that mark is, um, but we know that that mark is assigned to others to um, to uphold Cain's life, right? Not to take Cain's life, mm-hmm. even though Cain took his brothers. Um, right. And so, yeah, we see this, this spilling of God, uh, of sorry, spilling of blood, uh, and yet God steps in and, um, and, and gives life. And it's, it- it's yeah, one of those things that um, to receive a gift from God, uh, it, it actually, it very much, God only gives gifts, but it very much depends on on sort of our perception, our attitude. We have to actually be shown that the cross is a good thing, for example. We have to be shown that that love for neighbor is a good thing and selfishness doesn't actually end in success. Um, and in the same way, it the, the mark of Cain is something that, that the, the world loves to sort of speak about as um, as a burden um as as a curse uh the pop culture even runs so far as to say this is the first vampire um <laughs> and, and like i'm serious and, and then you recognize this you dive into it and you realize no this is god actually saying that that uh sin will not be repaid with sin but but rather um sin will be repaid with mercy yeah yeah and what a what a wonderful message for us to carry alongside right as people who carry the message of of christ as lights in the world today we get to to give that that message of mercy. So you mentioned earlier, um, young women who experience unplanned pregnancy, right? Some of them are going to go through with an abortion, and because they are so afraid, because uh, they are they are convinced that no one is going to um, care for them or for their child, or that it is impossible to um, bring another life into the world. And so, you know, when we when we think about this, I mean, it's it's it is a horrific thing, right, to end a life, and yet God's response is mercy, right? And so we, as God's people, get get to share that when that woman is carrying guilt, and obviously Cain recognizes the guilt, like he he recognizes what he has done. His face falls. Yeah, he can't His even look falls. up. Anymore. That's right. He's, yeah, he knows he knows what he has done, and and so we have this 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 moment of of burden and guilt and shame and 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 um reflection on i have sinned right and god steps in right then and says and and you are loved right and you are forgiven and i will care for you and i will continue to uphold your life and that is the message that we need to share with women uh women who have been caught up in in the lie that abortion solves all the problems right that abortion is the answer to the fears that that they're facing, mm-hmm. um, we step in and, and we remem- remind women that there is no sin too great for God's forgiveness, right? And that they too are loved. Yeah, the the marks that 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 sinners get in Christianity are so different because everywhere else in the world it's one of stigma, um, and here it's only one of mercy. 
and and it has to be it, it's so evil when when the devil would pollute the church so that that we would stigmatize one another for being sinners when rather god wants to cover that with the mark of baptism with, with, with the right. mark of forgiveness and and so this is this is a place that, that not only the world needs reminded of but we need preached to too because it's it's so easy in the midst of of pain and anger over over watching watching brokenness in the world to to sort of want to pay it back with more of the same and god insists that he be the one to bear it Absolutely. Great end. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Michelle. Yeah, let's keep going next time. But uh, it's great to see you. Uh, what's what's Y for Life up to? Uh, we're, we actually have three big conferences that are coming up in April. One is uh, for college leaders. Uh, one is our Gender Hope for Healing conference out in California. If you haven't signed up yet, please do. Uh, and another one is our apologetics retreat in Oklahoma. Again, still open uh, opportunities for people to sign up. We would love to have you. So that's great. Michelle, thanks so much. Have a great day. Thanks. You too.